Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at a pen by a brand that has been around for a very long time. I'll try to make that as appealing as I could, but I think it just turned out very scarily. My apologies. So today we're going to have a look at a Waterman pen. Waterman is uh, something that's been around for a long time, right? We, we know that, uh, that that's the case. Um, in the lands of Middle Earth, legend tells of uh, uh, Mr. Waterman who invented the fountain pen. There's always discussion about who had the first patent and all that, but still, for sure, Waterman was one of the first to sell fountain pens that, that worked as a fountain pen as we know it. So that's very cool. This pen was lent to me by uh, Knight's Writing. I appreciate that, so I will send it back soon as I'm done with it. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. And today we're going to be talking about the Waterman Perspective. White cardboard outer sleeve, which I shall not toss because I have to send it back. Um, and then you have this cute blue box. Waterman's been using these boxes for quite a while, similar boxes, and I kind of like it. It's this built-in ribbon. It's kind of a, a classic, uh, <coughs> a kind of a, a classic uh, distinguished uh, look, which I think is, is not bad at all. So they have it, you open the box, it, it flips open, the pen is right there. Is it not, why is it not there? Because it's on my desk. Um, you have a little pen bed, and you can take this out, and then you have a little Actually, it's not that little. You have a Waterman cartridge, uh, they're, they're quite big. You can also use a converter, of course, uh, and there is this uh, this Waterman uh, warranty booklet, which is uh, rather long, has filling instructions and all. So, there you have it. What about the pen man? Well, we go to the pen now. The Waterman Perspective. It's available in blue and black lacquer. It should be obvious that this is the blue, not the black. Uh, it's a modern design. They try to be uh, uh, a, a bit fancy and modern, I, I get the feeling. It has some interesting things going for it, and it has some things going for it that I, I don't really care for that much. So let's cover the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sum. So let's start top of the pen. Oops, sorry. Sorry about the noise. Uh, here's the finial. Waterman logo, simple, nice. We have the cap. Uh, it should be clear this is a fairly slim pen. Uh, it's not super short, but it's it's not an enormous pen either. Uh, we have the clip with that sort of that, that opening that that Waterman does, and I think is kind of cute. And then we have the logo on the uh, end of the clip again. Uh, I always like spring-loaded clips, and this one is spring-loaded, so it, it also has an interesting shape. Let me show you on the on the side. The profile is quite nice, so it's easy to use, which is, is always nice. You have a center band, which I'm, I'm trying to sort of catch the light so you can actually see it. It has a pattern engraved into it, and it says, uh, sorry, I had to turn around. It says France on one side and Waterman Paris on the other side. Let's see if I can show you. That is the Waterman uh, Paris engraving, and then France is right there. And the barrel continues, ends in this chrome thing with a little black end cap, and that's it. The cap pulls off. That's made it seem like it was very easy to pull off. I don't think it was on there completely tightly, um, but it's, it's a pretty tight closure. Uh, it, it won't accidentally fall off. Nice, reasonably sized nib with its own interesting engraving and the Waterman logo, uh, and then a, a simple sort of flat feed, uh, which I find enjoyable, uh, and then, I mean just visually, and then there is this section which has, I guess, three tiers, as I said, this is the engraving that you can see when the cap is on there, uh, and uh, and that's that's pretty much all there's to it. Uh, section, uh, yeah, so it's it's like a, like a big uh, bridal cake or something, various... Uh, uh, tears. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. And then the pen is fed by either a cartridge or a converter. And as I said, those Waterman cartridges are not that bad. They're, they're quite big and they hold a, a pretty reasonable amount of ink, I found. Actually, I think more than a, uh, a converter holds, just because it's a solid tube. Right? A converter would be something like, like this, maybe. So you, you get a reasonable amount of ink out of that. 
and I always think watermelon is proprietary, but it really looks like a standard international cartridge. So I wouldn't be surprised if you can also put a standard international cartridge in it, maybe with a little bit of pressure, but I'm thinking it should work. Pen, posts. So there you have it. I'll show you a close up of that. That's how far it, it uh, the cap slides on there. And if you do that, you have a pretty long uh, pen. Without it, it's normal pen size, I would say. Not particularly thick, not particularly long. Uh, pretty average uh, size. Um, okay. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? A couple of things I really like. One is for a I'm just going to call that a snap cap, or some people call it a slip cap. It doesn't screw on, it just pops on. It's very tight, and it doesn't really rotate. You see, now I'm rotating it because I'm unscrewing the entire section. But for some reason, I don't really like it when you have a snap cap and it, it just rotates around the section. Now, I cannot promise that with extended use, after, I don't know, months, years of capping and uncapping, it's going to stay this tight. But when you get it, it's a pretty tight fixture, which I like. Modern design. That's not for everyone. Uh, Waterman also has some pretty classic pens. I'm thinking, for example, of the Expert 3. That's a very, I think, a very classic Waterman design. This is clearly more modern with the engraving, with the chrome, with the, the, the slim line, uh, the, the, that, that section. Um, but, you know, you either like it or you don't, I guess. But, but for those of you who, who like uh, this, this tight design, I, I think you will enjoy this pen. Spring-loaded clip, that is something I always really enjoy. It just makes me a bit nervous when a, when a clip just bends. I was afraid that I will bend it too far one day and, and bend it out of shape. And that, that can happen. I have had especially pretty inexpensive pens where you can basically just take the clip and with one finger just bend it over to the other side. Um, so I think that's, that's, that's nice. Um, the engravings on, it's not really the section, although I guess it is the section actually, depending on how you hold it, but this part of the barrel slash section, it's interesting, it's interesting for sure. And I mean, in, in, in that regard, I, I do think that is a, um, uh, an, an interesting uh, uh, design. I don't know if you just heard it, that's the doorbell. Pens! More pens coming in for review, you know? Um, so there is that. Um, the engraving is definitely interesting. I, I will say that. Um, so that's very cool. Things I don't like so much. Um, there's three things, maybe four. The first thing is this section confuses me. Uh, quite simply because I don't know where to hold it. Am I supposed to hold it right there? Then it would be like this. Then I have the feeling my fingers are very close to the nib. But if, if not, then why, why, is, why are these tears here? Why is, this, why is this indent? Am I supposed to hold it there? right up up there, then the pen is on the short side for me. Now, of course, you can you can post it, and then that's not that bad. But then why this, this step down? Twice, actually. I don't really get it. And um, I also don't find it that comfortable. These, these grooves, it's not that they are super sharp. I won't cut my skin on this. But there are grooves. And I really feel them as I hold it down there. So maybe that is an indication that I am supposed to hold it there. But then why the step down? I just don't really get it. And that could entirely be me. Um, but I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't really, this is not my favorite section. Let's put it that way. Um, the second issue I had was that the, the pen posts, but then there is, to me, a slightly odd gap. Why doesn't it push all the way down? I, I don't I don't really get that. Um, that could be a design decision. Waterman thought it would be cool to have a gap there. That's possible. I mean, there are grooves here, so maybe they thought this would be, I don't know, a, a nice design. I don't know what their reasoning was, but for, to me, it looks a bit weird. I would not, I would have it just pushed down all the way. What I will say is, posting is very secure. The pen will not accidentally fall out, which is very pleasant. The third issue I had, um, and that is a big one, is that the nib is too dry. It doesn't have a breather hole, which doesn't necessarily make a difference. The Faber-Castell Emotion is a steel nib that doesn't have a breather hole. So that writes very, very pleasantly. 
but it's so dry that it barely writes. This is a nib that needs a tune-up. And for such a large company um, to, to release a nib that, that requires that, I don't think is particularly strong. Um, I really had issues making this right. I have not adjusted it, I have not tuned it, because as I said, I have to return it to the shop. Um, but this is something that to me is a bigger issue, because when we buy a pen, we expect it to write. Right? Right. Or not right. Right? Anyway, um, so th that's an issue. This, th th there's no, no discussion about it. It should write out of the box. Now, I'm sure that if this were to happen, you would buy it from Knights, uh, and you have to get this. I'm sure they would sort you out. I'm sure they would, they would help you and, and make sure that you either get another pen or you get a nib replacement or whatever. But a little disappointing, especially given that this pen costs 220 Canadian dollars. So that's, you know, give or take, 170 US dollars. It's not that cheap. And you get a steel nib, not a gold nib, and the nib that doesn't write so well. So that is a disappointment. No doubt about it. Having said all of that, we need to see how the pen writes, if it writes. Uh, measurements will be on the website, sbrebrown.com, as well as high-resolution pictures. We're going to see how it writes. A very kind thank you to the Knights Writing Company. It was a pleasure to meet you at the uh, Scriptus Pen Show in Toronto. I really uh, enjoyed our, our interaction. Brief as it was, but I think at, it was the end of the day and all of us were wiped. Um, but very pleasant. Thanks for lending me the pen. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful so far, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with the Waterman Perspective. The uh, the nib is a, um, I want to say fine, yes, suddenly I was in doubt. Uh, the ink is the Waterman Black, uh, sorry, Waterman, uh, in the cartridge that came with it, all right? I'm writing with a light hand here, so there is no pressure as I write. Um, you never know when you review a pen if they're all write like this. I assume not because my experience with the Waterman has been considerably better than this. But as you can see, this is a dry nib. There's a lot of skipping. Uh, if you write with a heavier hand, which I'm doing now solely for review purposes, I would not recommend anyone to exert that amount of pressure on a pen, you see that it does write. So it's simply a matter of it needs to be made wetter which you can do, but I mean, of course you would expect a pen to write out of the box. Uh, a bit of fast writing and I am making contact with the paper, more fox, lazy. It's not that I'm trying to cheat here or make it not write. I, I, I'm, it's, it's in touch with the paper, it's just barely writing. Wetness. Well, it's obviously not really a winner there. Um, line variation, just some very careful pressure. You see that there is some to be had, but Definitely not a flex pen, nor is it advertised as such. Reverse writing, uh, you can turn it upside down, but it runs dry very, very quickly and doesn't really work. But you would go from a, I would say, a good fine to an extra fine if you really want to. Okay, Knight's writing, thank you for lending me the pen. I appreciate it. Hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye bye. Bye.